to Diamond Delight Edibles. My name is Liz, if this is the first time you stopped by, and for the rest of you guys, welcome back, and thank you so much for your support. You guys are truly, truly awesome. So, just because you're so awesome, I am about to bring you something incredibly awesome that I'm pretty sure nobody out there has done. Snoop Dogg, Miss Martha Stewart, I don't even think you guys have known how to do this. So, hey, check this out. I'm going to show you how to make real royal icing with can of butter. And you're probably going, whoa, wait a minute, Liz. You can't put butter in egg whites. Well, in the normal cases, you can. However, you can't. However, I'm going to show you how this can be done. So, check it out. Flood. You've got your piping. Um, we can get your piping texture, your flood texture. You can write with it. Not that my writing is very good. And you got your, see, you can do detail, texture. Show you a textured one I did. I was just testing something out, so see. Check that. You can get build texture from it. So it does actually give you um, a little bit more versatility than your regular, um, than your regular royal icing. So let's jump right into those ingredients and let's see how this magic happens. All right, everyone, are you ready for this? I'm about to show you stuff that you have probably never ever seen before, and that is putting butter into egg whites. Yeah, that's right, into royal icing and putting butter. You're like, what? You can't do that, Liz. That is the number one rule that you cannot put a fat into um, into egg whites. Ha ha, but yes, you can. With Jello and Goro Gum as an emulsifier, takes care of that. So I'm gonna get into the ingredients here and go over exactly how we do this. And you are going to be surprised. All right, so for our recipe, you're going to want one box, the three ounce or 85 gram box of Jello. So the flavor that you want. Now I would recommend lemon because two reasons. Lemon usually goes really well with your sugar cookies or your gingerbread. As well, it's an easier color to manipulate. So if you wanna be able to change the colors, um, you can do that much easier with yellow versus trying to use cherry, which cherry doesn't really taste very good with gingerbread. So, hey, whatever. So, um, yeah, that's why I decided to go with lemon. Although you're seeing a peach box, I'm actually using lemon jello. You're gonna want three egg whites. Um, I actually use the liquid egg whites in the carton. You're going to want one tablespoon of melted can of butter. We are going to use a half a teaspoon of vinegar. Now, yeah, of vinegar, huh? What, again? Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm constantly doing research on different recipes and how to actually get that real professional um, quality in, in our products instead of it just being a really good home-baked product. So <clears throat> I was doing some research and found out that white vinegar works a hundred times better than lemon juice or uh, cream of tartar in your egg whites. And I tried it out and it is fantastic. Way more stable, they're shiny, it's unbelievable. And zero, zero vinegar taste. You get zero taste of the vinegar. So with that, you are going to want two to two and a half cups of powdered icing sugar, the confectionery sugar, and you wanna make sure you sift it. And then we are going to need a half a teaspoon of gore, sorry, a quarter teaspoon of Gora Gum. And Gora Gum is an emulsifier. It is gluten-free and um, you can get it at any health food store or in most grocery stores in the health food section. It is what uh, a lot of times um, vegans and that will add to uh, making breads and things, etc., to be able to give you some, some glue. So it's, it's becoming a lot easier to find. Now, I'm sure a lot of people are going to ask me, can you use xanthan gum? No, xanthan gum is not an emulsifier. It is only a thickener and a stabilizer. So uh, you absolutely need gore gum or you could use lecithin. However, I would not recommend it for the taste factor of it. As well as I haven't tested it, so I'm not 100% sure if that will work, but I know this works. So onward and forward. Um, and then I'm going to use some white food coloring to give me a nice solid base so that I can manipulate and make whatever colors that I want. So I'm going to do green and probably some other colors. And you'll need a, a quarter cup of boiled water for our gelatin, for our jello. And that's all that we're going to need for our ingredients. Let's get into our equipment and then let's watch some magic happen. 
All right, so for our equipment, you're going to need your hand or stand mixer, the uh, whisk attachment, the whisk attachment or the whippy thing as I like to call it. You're going to need a double boiler. So you can either use two pots that work together if you don't actually have a double boiler, two pots that work together, or you can just use a metal bowl or um, a Pyrex um, that will fit into the, your pot. And you just want to put enough water in um, you're just going to put enough water in, but make sure that your the water does not touch the bottom of your pot or your bowl. You'll need a hand blender, or you can use a whisk. You're going to want piping bags for however, however many colors that you want to make, and a spatula, measuring spoons, that type of stuff, and then just a few extra bowls for however many, again, for however many colors that you want to make. And that's it for the equipment, so let's jump right in and get going on this. All right, so the first step that we have to do is to prepare our jello and our can of butter and gore gum. So you're going to put your jello into your pot, add a quarter cup of boiling water, and turn your heat on to medium low, and you're gonna stir that. You're gonna stir your jello until it's completely dissolved, until the sugar and the gelatin is completely dissolved. So it takes a couple of minutes to do. So if you want to have more of that real lemon taste versus that, you know, jello lemon taste, you can add in fresh lemon zest into this and that will really help uh, balance it out, making it more of a real lemon flavor versus that candy-ish flavor. Once your jello is all melted, the sugar's all dissolved and the gelatin is all dissolved, we are going to add in our melted can of butter. Scooter in there. And we're going to add a quarter teaspoon of the gore gum. So you want to sprinkle it over top of the butter. This way it won't cause lumps. Then you're going to take your hand blender and we're going to emulsify this puppy. Now you will know that you will know that you're emulsified when your um, Jello syrup here lightens up quite a bit in the color, as well as you're not going to see any green, um, any of the green butter. It's going to be one uniform texture, and we're good to go there. So now I'm going to add in that bit of my white. And if you guys do use this white, uh, the Wilton's white, make sure you to thoroughly shake it before you use it, especially if it's been sitting for a while. It tends to separate. I'm going to chuck some white in there. And I'm just going to whip that up. And once you're done, turn the heat off and actually take it off the heat because we want this to cool while we're making our egg whites. All right, so now we're going to start the royal icing part. So we're going to put in our egg whites, and you want your always want your egg whites to be room temperature. And we're going to put in our half teaspoon of vinegar. And if you don't want to use the vinegar, you can absolutely use um, a lemon or cream of tartar, half a teaspoon of cream of tartar, or I think it's a teaspoon of lemon juice. But I'm using the half a teaspoon of vinegar. And I'm going to attach my whippy thing. And we're going to beat this until they are a soft peak. And you're going to beat them on high. So start it out on medium and then put them up to high until I said we get to uh, soft peaks. All right, so it looks like we're getting to soft peak right now. And that is so. So soft peak is, I said, you just hold a peak and it's just very soft. It's not going to hold. And there's still going to be liquid at the bottom. So now goes in our uh, two cups of powdered sugar. So we're just going to turn it on to low to get the sugar incorporated. And then we are going to stream in our, um, our jello and can of butter mixture here. So the one thing as it's cooling, you want to make sure that you don't see any butter uh, that's risen, risen to the top or any separation. If you do, add a little bit more gore gum and whip her up with the uh, hand blend. Very important. So let's get this mixed in here. And it's going to kind of come together as a paste. And it'll, you'll see it'll just start to smooth out. And let's quickly give our edges a wipe down. 
Get that rest of that sugar in there. Sticky stuff, man. All right, so let's get that mixed in here a bit. And once the, your icing sugar has been incorporated, you're just gonna slowly uh, pour your gelatin, your jello mixture into your egg whites. And again, I'm just gonna scrape down the sides here and then I'm gonna turn this up to high and we're gonna whip this until it is nice and stiff. All right, I'm just gonna have a pack. So it's a nice texture, it's a little bit loose, so I'm gonna add in about a half a cup more of powdered sugar and that should be good for us. So again, whenever you're adding additional powdered sugar, always start low so that you don't go poof and then turn it back up to high for about two minutes. And if need be, always, if you got stuff on the sides, always scrape down the sides. All right, check it out. Oi. Royal icing. Uh-huh, that's right, with can of butter. Ha, ha, ha. I bet Martha Stewart and Stu Snoop Dogg have never managed to master this. I got one on you. All right, so... Now, the really cool, cool thing about this stuff too is because it's a little bit thicker and has that gelatin in it, you can actually pipe and you and get textures from royal icing that you normally can't from regular royal icing. So for example, this was one that I tested when I was like, oh, can I do this? So I was just trying to play with a little pot leaf here. I was doing it in red. And um, so see how I can get texture on it? It's not very good leaf, but I can actually get texture into it. So I thought that was a really cool thing too. And then as well, this was just one, I just wanted to see how it quickly coated. And yeah, there you go. So let's um, split some of this up so we can uh, make some color and also how to thin this out. So right now this would be in a very thick piping um, for, um, for very detail, if you want to keep detail or for uh, bleh, uh, outlines, piping outlines, that's the word I was looking for. Then, to, if you need to thin it down for flood icing, just like our regular uh, royal icing, you're just going to add in a little bit of water at a time until you get the consistency that you want. Alright, so I'm going to split this up to make some colors. Alright, so I'm just going to split this off, so some of this I want to stay white. And then I want green, nice dark green, a little bit of black for the outline. That's enough block for the outline. The rest I'm just going to keep white in case I need want to make another color. <laughs> All right, so my white, because I'm not going to use it for a little bit, I'm just going to cover it up with some saran wrap so that it doesn't dry out, get that get crusty on top. When you're putting saran wrap for um, royal icing, place it on top of it. <laughs> so not just over the bowl like so. You actually want to put it and have it the saran wrap sit right on top of your royal icing. And then put another piece over top. Like so. Okay. So let's do some green. I'm gonna do black. So for my green, I'm going to want to thin this out because I want it to be more of a flood. This is definitely a uh, piping, uh, an outline texture. So <laughs> let's get some water here. And when you're doing this, you only want to add in about a teaspoon at a time. Very little water. It's back so it's easier. And just a little bit more water. It's just a little bit thick for a flood. And so as you can see, it acts just like regular royal icing. So I said just add water to get the right consistency that you need. Okay, so to know that you've got a good flood consistency, what you wanna just do is take your spatula, cut through, and if that line fills in, with, uh, in within 15 seconds, it's a good flood uh, consistency. If it fills in really, really quick, then you may wanna thicken it up. So I've got this at a nice texture, at a nice flood consistency. I'm just gonna put that into a piping bag get my black mixed up and let's get some decorating done. So now I'm gonna show you that your can of butter royal icing works exactly the same as your regular royal icing. Prepare to be astounded. 
So I'm just going to make an outline of the leaf. And now I'm just going to flood it. So I can spread it, Ooh, fill her in. And so you just use your toothpick to spread your flood around to fill in all its little gaps. And there you have it. Not the best leaf, so I'm going to decorate something a lot cute, cuter for you so you can actually see. But check it out. Outlines, flooding, the whole, the whole shebang. Ah! And it dries just like your regular. Um, all right, so let me decorate some other cookies and let's, um, and I'll finish this up for us. All right, so check it out. See, you can write with it. You can make details with it. You can flood and do details. And you can make adorable little gingerbread men, just like your regular royal icing. So isn't that awesome? I'm going to check this one out. It's not fully dried yet. But see, just like your regular royal icing with can of butter in it. Uh-huh. All right, guys, so that is my demonstration there for you on can of butter royal icing. I hope you enjoyed that. If you have any questions at all, please don't hesitate to leave them down below or comments. I always love to hear from you. And uh, yeah, that's everything for me today. I uh, wish you guys all the best for the holidays. And um, yeah, love you. Have a great evening.